I say it is my saddest experience in Belize because the place that I am going to take you today, I don't think any human being deserves to live in such a place or even in such a condition. And I also think that if you see the place that I'm going to show you. So I'm very appreciated for this house. Oh, wow. It's not much, but I loved it. Yeah. You might slow down when you complain. My name is Mickey. Keep watching. Every country in this world, if peaceful, has the potential of being a paradise. And yes, Belize is a paradise, but only when you can afford it. I've made a lot of videos showcasing the amazing tourist attractions Belizeans has been blessed with. But in this video, I would like to show the struggles on the other side. First, to raise awareness and second, to reach out to get help for the residents of Antelope Street Extension in Belize City. I have come to meet a man who is going to take me to this neighborhood in Belize City. He is called Mr. Magdaleno and he is like the Robin Hood of Belize. Um, the only difference is he is not stealing. I've made a video of Mr. Magdaleno. He's got a page called Ladyville Highlights and what he does is he appeals to people who can afford um, certain things in Belize and he will give it to people in need in Belize. He is well respected in Belize as a whole, so he's the one who is going to take me to this um, area. So come with us. We finally set off to Belize City's Antelope Street extension. On approach, the site I was faced with was a far cry from the beautiful beaches I've experienced. This is the neighborhood that I'm telling you about. I've been told that these people are squatters. I don't know what that means. That's what I was told. I'm making this video to say that this is not nice for someone to live in. We've got kids here and we've got kids who are going to grow up and compete with my kids. I'm not saying I am affluent, but looking at the situation over here, I think it's unfair for my kids to compete with some of these kids over here. Mrs. Magdaleno took her time to explain to me who a squatter is. Squatters are people who, who just come and chop out a piece of land yeah. and they just live there. Oh, okay. They don't really own it and so later on down they hope that the government give them a paper to say that it is yours. All right. Mr. Magdaleno, on the other hand, took the opportunity to present a donation received from donors abroad in support of one of the residents' business. This is a donation for the say, Night Sisters in Los Angeles. Okay. All right, and they say the man want to do his whole business, provide the man with a container so we go to road and make your dollars. Say something nice to the Night Sisters. Yeah. Eh? Thanks to the people that donate this to that to me. I really appreciate it a lot. And, you know, yeah, be helpful to me in the future. Yeah. yeah. As I told you, Mr. Magdaleno is like Robin Hood of Belize. Even coming to show me this place, he brought a donation, um, something that he got. So these are contributions that came from abroad, mostly America. And recently I realized he got stuff from um, Jamaica and other um, Caribbean countries. And that is nice to see. Good, good man. Entering the neighborhood, you are faced with two hazards. These harmless looking live electric wires, which are not far from reach. Yo, these are live electrical wires. Oh. And these makeshift wooden pallet bridge, famously dubbed the London Bridge of Belize City. Slippery when wet. No force it if you don't have to help you with that. So we are going through this makeshift bridge. You can imagine when it gets rainy, you can see that this place will wet up. That's how Belizeans would say, get wet over here. So you have to be careful. And 
I am doing this journey like once, maybe twice. Someone has to do it every morning, maybe five times a day. You know, that's, that's part of their daily living. And Stay, stay on, the, on the edge. The middle is not safe, Mickey. I decided to delve into the stories of some of the residents. Well, I'm here like one year and six months. Yeah. How did you did you live somewhere before coming? Well, I was renting house and um, mean rent was a problem to find income because you know at the time job was really slow with my boyfriend because he don't have no papers for here. So I got the land from my brother and then he bought a house for $150 Belize. It was old but there it is and I'm not quite comfortable but thank God I'm out of rent and I'm grateful. Felipe's partner had to go back to El Salvador as the stress of not finding a job during the global lockdown took a toll on his mental health, leaving her to cater for two toddlers without an income. This is everything here. She doesn't have bathroom, so what she does is go to her mom to utilize the bathroom. When it rains, everything in here get, gets wet. Oh God. Yes. If you, if you look over that side, you will see all the openings. Opening down here behind the tank. Oh god. Then the flooring. Oh no. So this this <laughs> Oh god. Oh, right. oh god, no. The flooring, no. everything. I have the um I put my lead tin cloth making a really on all kinds of breeze. <laughs> But when the, when the breeze blow, blow, it blow, rain out, kind of thing come on the edge but because you need to... In the event of a hurricane, it come. Hmm. Oh, look at that stay, what kind of no, hurricane, it come. I can't stay. I can't stay at all. And just uh, hurricane season will start next month. I know. And just, for, just say what hurricane would come. This Will this survive? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe the breeze might lift everything because the cold way you have. I don't think this will survive. I don't believe so. I think you're not tropical. I see your tropical star, maybe a problem. See all the sun is shining on my face, straight from the corner there. Imagine. Oh. Oh, Philippa here was telling me, um, as you can see, there are holes and so gaps shanted. all over I'm the place, right? She's got a kid. Um, I think the baby is like six months. Six months. And if you know belize do have um experienced hurricane so next month is going to be the hurricane season and she will have to stay in this um shelter and she said whenever it rains i she doesn't have to tell me you can see all the gaps whenever it rains it's coming here straight away and she's been living here over a year now um, i don't know how she does it and i'm even thinking about crawlies like snakes and you know insects and stuff like that how do you feel when you are going to sleep? Do you still are you still able to sleep at night? Well, that's the only thing I have to to to. I barely sleep because I have the kids, and in here isn't secure enough. Mm. So at night, that's the worst time for me because I have to be up to try to make sure nobody comes in, no animals because this is you know swamp. So we have toads, we have snakes, we have Scorpion. scorpions. Man, especially when it rains. Not to mention the mosquito. Believe it or not, this is somebody's world. I also got a chance to meet Chantel, a former hairdresser who lost her business during lockdown. Struggling to pay her rent, Chantel would offer her possessions and livelihood like TV and stove in return for a roof over herself and her family's head. Eventually running out of possessions, she had no choice but to move into this wooden shelter in this neighborhood. How many people share this room? Um, this is shared by four people, me and my three kids, two girls and a little boy. 
it feels uncomfortable, but it's something you have to adjust yourself to, you know, to for your, for your lifestyle, you understand? It's not something you're happy with, you're not comfortable in it, but it's something you have to live with until you can do better or get help to do better. I, I must say for a big, big, big thank you to them, you know, for to think about us with the condition that we live in back here and to say, well, you know what, let us help them with water. At least, the least we can do as Belize Water Service for serves us for so long in Belize. You know, um, I must say thank you to them again. You know, um, um, yeah. I wish more could happen, like the street could be pushed. You know, so we can have access to not only water but to ele proper electricity because the wire is not good enough for the kids. You understand? It's not. It, it's it's not only not healthy but it's not safe. You understand? So. I would like to see something like that happen too as well back here. Okay, so when you think about your kids' future, does it give you, do you have any concerns? Well, when it comes to my kids' future, everything is a concern <laughs> as a parent, you understand me? But my main focus right now is to give them better living facility so that they could be comfortable in their home. If they're comfortable in their home, Good things can happen. Problems with um, thieves? Um, back here, usually when it comes to thief, it would be like people that is not from the area, from the area would okay. come in. Because everybody look out for everybody back oh, here. Okay. Everybody make sure if I leave my door open, then my neighbor looks out for me. If he yeah. does that, then I do the same. Yeah. Look out for him. Though the struggle was clear to see, one positive thing rang through all the residents of this neighborhood being thankful for their humble but personal space and living rent free this attitude shone through when i met anselma a single mother of two so what's your name again well my name is anselma flores oh anselma yeah i think yeah, i saw everybody you call me Dorito. all right okay not everyone can remember anselma so how is it like living here with, with your kids <laughs> much better than any else thing Oh, much. Oh, okay. It's not much, yeah. but I'm grateful for it. It's mine. So, I'm very, very lucky. Most people want something right now. Yeah. I got mine fighting for it, so I'm very appreciative for this house. Oh, wow. It's not much, but I loved it. Yeah. Um, you guys want to go up? Yeah, let me. You see, like, I'm just worried about the kids. Um, anything could be here. There could be snakes, there could be scorpions. But for these kids, this is their normal. And one thing is, all these wires over here are live. So, yeah, we are not supposed to touch it. I know um, I've been told not to touch them. And it's interesting that the kids, they know not to touch these. Chantel just told me that they caught crocodile over here. Uh, that sounds new to me. Yes, I wish I was told care. earlier. <laughs> the police but, take care of them, man. Oh wow. And it's true because where I live, when it rains, we do get some crocodiles coming out of the lake. So I'm not going to doubt what she said. Is the truth? The final glaring issue pointed out by Chantel was the fire hazard. The whole sketch for a fire at the back here, no access to the fire engine for the fire truck coming, nothing like that. You understand me? Once your whole start a catch, it's over. Consider it done. Done. So it is getting dark now. Um, I have to go and leave these people on their own to live in their own world and to deal with it. If you are touched by this, Mr. Magdaleno through Ladyville Highlights is doing a lot for this community. Um, if anything, 
I'll put his details in the video description and I'm also going to put it on the screen please contact them if you want to help them I don't know who is going to watch this but if you are touched please reach out and I will direct you to Ladyville Highlight Mr. Magdaleno and he will get whatever donation you want to give within me I am very sad that someone will have to leave this and I'm not going to get into the politics of it and I'm not going to get into um, the whole um, they should have done this they should have done that um, it is what it is and they need to get out of that situation and hopefully they will be able to get out of it thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one